All right, everybody, welcome to the show. I got a big news day for you. So uh, we will be talking in just a little bit about the Fox News Dominion lawsuit and what happened on that front. Um, interesting end result, man. Interesting end result. We were this close to getting to trial, and then there was a settlement at the last second. How much is it? What does it all mean? I'll break all that down for you. Um, we actually have some breaking news that I can't wait to dive into, which is uh, Jordan Peterson comes after Marianne Williamson. And you know what? It doesn't go too well for him. So I'm going to lead with that in just a second. Uh, we have Bernie Sanders debating Jen Psaki on her new MSNBC show. And a MAGA superstar, one of the big guys who led the whole, like, stop the steal effort. Uh, and also partook in that anti-groomer crusade. Apparently he's a groomer. And he was asking underage boys for dick pics. Okay, so we'll get to that and much, much more. All right, so um, Jordan Peterson decided, I'm going to go after Marianne Williamson today. Ever since he moved to the, uh, the Daily Wire, you know, it's no secret and no surprise to anybody. He's continued to move further and further and further right. He's feeding that audience what they want to hear. Um, you know, he's aligned himself with Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro and people like that. And this is something, remember guys, back in like 2017, um, Jordan Peterson fancied himself, I wouldn't say he was apolitical, but he was more apolitical than he is now. And he focused more on his like self-improvement stuff and his psychology stuff. And that's just not the case anymore. Uh, now he's a crusading right winger. Now he may take issue with that um, description, but I think just an objective analysis of the things he talks about and the issues he cares about, I think it's empirically correct to say he's a right wing crusader. So he decides, he sees this Marianne Williamson tweet, I guess it pops up on his timeline. And the Marianne Williamson tweet says, we need a World War II level mass mobilization to address climate change on a fundamental level. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll play a little bit of that for you here, and then we'll get to his response. Climate change is the greatest moral challenge of our generation. Do we need a Green New Deal? Oh, you betcha we need a Green New Deal. But we need a Green New Century. We need to do more than mitigate the effects of climate change. We need to recognize it as the existential threat to the species that it actually is. There's a reason why we, we are not adequately dealing with the climate crisis, and that is because of the obstruction from fossil fuel companies. We need to sequester the carbon. We need the reforestation processes. We need to develop sustainable energy, sustainable transportation, and we need to deal with animal uh, factory farming as well. We would have, if I were president of the United States, a world-class environmentalist at the head of the EPA. We have to recognize the destruction of our environment as an ongoing process. So you guys get the gist of it. These are all really, really unobjectionable things, right? Uh, he chimes in and says, your Democrat candidates in action. Everything is in apocalyptic crisis. Give us all the power now. Nothing suspicious about that. Hmm. Okay. Um, so before I get to her reaction, this first comment is really telling to me. This person says, power and money, don't forget the money. It is hilariously ironic that they bring that up as a criticism of Marianne Williamson. Why? Well, Marianne responded to Jordan Peterson. She says, you've inverted the conspiracy. Big oil has all the power and wants to keep it. It does so in part by funding junk science peddlers. And then there's a link here uh, to an article, which title is Jordan Peterson's climate expert is science denier funded by oil backed think tank. The Canadian author has cited S. Fred Singer, an American physicist who argued climate change was natural after telling podcast host Joe Rogan that climate change could not be modeled accurately. So you guys remember when he did, uh, you know, he went on Rogan's show and was basically saying climate change is a bunch of garbage, and Joe Rogan was even pushing back on him quite a bit. Well, look, the point Marianne Williamson is making here is exactly correct. He's inverted the conspiracy. In his mind, it's like, oh, these nefarious Democrats are trying to control every aspect of your life, and they're just power hungry, and so that's what's going on here. They don't actually believe in climate change. They don't think it's a thing. They're not trying to fight back against it. Again, you want to talk about straw manning your opponents? That's as big of a straw man as I can imagine. So none of them really believe it. None of them really think it's real. It's all just a power grab. 
The real conspiracy is the one that's out in the open if you follow the money, which is that big oil and the fossil fuel industry, through lobbying, they pay the politicians, they fund their campaigns, and then when the politicians get in office, they do the bidding of big oil. Now, part and parcel of that is what? They also fund junk science peddlers. They fund pundits and commentators and experts who argue that, bro, this isn't a big deal. What are you even talking about? Guys, I'm not kidding. There's uh, some of the same people who in the 1970s and 1980s were arguing, cigarettes don't cause cancer, bro. Cigarettes don't even cause cancer. We don't even know what you guys are talking about, bro. They had experts and scientists and doctors who would argue this in front of congressional committees. The same group that funded that effort is also funding the effort to say, climate change is like, whatever, bro. It's no big deal. It's like totally natural and stuff. I don't even know why you guys are like being all crazy. You guys are actually the science deniers, man. It's not us. Don't look at who we're funded by. I think, by the way, I think the name of that group that funded both the, um, you know, cigarettes don't cause cancer people and the climate change is fake people. I think it's the American Heartland Institute. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, guys. I might be butchering it because I'm doing this by memory, but it's some literally some of the same people who are making the arguments. And Jordan Peterson has the nerve to argue that the real conspiracy is that power-hungry Marianne Williamson is trying to control every aspect of your life. Marianne Williamson, by the way, when it comes to social issues, she's totally live and let live. You want to smoke weed? Go ahead and smoke weed. Should women have control of their bodies? You're damn right they should have control of their bodies. We're talking about a person who on social issues is very libertarian in the sense that it's like, hey man, you do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody else. But that person is power hungry and is trying to control your life. No, what she's trying to do is make it so that we don't lose New Orleans. New Orleans doesn't go underwater. There aren't wars over water. There isn't extreme drought. All right, now by the way, I... Uh, I jumped in on this as well. I said, Jordan Peterson apparently sees no issue with these things, but is terrified if people want to fix it. So what am I sharing here? The following articles. The Middle East is becoming literally uninhabitable. One of the regions hardest hit by climate change is also one least equipped to deal with it. This is, this is from that far left outlet known as foreign policy. I say that, of course, tongue in cheek, because they're not, they're not even on the left. All right, next. How water shortages are brewing wars. This is something we've warned about for a while. In the developing world, you're going to have wars over water. From the Los Angeles Times, the Colorado River is drying up. Climate change and drought have taken a major toll. The Colorado River has been shrinking. Climate change and two decades of drought have sapped the river at its source in the Rocky Mountains. It's, under, it's less than half of what it should be, the Colorado River. Nothing to see there, right? Heat waves driven by climate change have cost the world 16 trillion since the 90s. So yeah, Jordan Peterson looks at this and doesn't see a problem. He looks at this and says, no, the real problem is that some people want to try to fix it. Some people want to eventually transition off of fossil fuels and get us to clean and renewable energy. Well, that's why, again, Marianne Williamson is exactly correct. This point is exactly correct. He's inverted the conspiracy. Big oil has the money. The fossil fuel industry has the money and power. And they have bought influence. And guys, think about it. In order for them to win the debate, all they have to do is insist they're still a debate. I mean, sure, some people say climate change is real. Other people say it's not. And other people say it's happening, but it's natural. So we should probably just do nothing in the meantime. We should do nothing. Well, then they win the debate. Because we don't do mass mobilization. We don't actually, um, you know, treat it like a World War II level issue, which it is. And uh, Jordan Peterson... Look, I don't know wh where he gets his funding from, other than the Daily Wire, of course, right? But um, certainly, at the very least, at the very least, the guy who he takes his word as gospel is funded by big oil. That's the conspiracy, Jordan. That's the conspiracy. So you had Marianne Williamson honestly uh, obliterate Jordan Peterson here, but he's not done. So he quote tweeted his own tweet going after Marianne Williamson and said, apparently the Democrats 
are cap I like how he tagged every single like democratic political arm, the Senate Democrats, the House Democrats, and the Democrats. He says, apparently the Democrats are capable of fielding worse candidates than Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom. And that's quite the anti-miracle. How little do you have to know about democratic politics to make the argument that the Democratic Party, like the leadership structure, that's who you're tagging to, to argue they want Marianne Williamson? How little do you know about the internal factions among the Democrats to make an argument like that? Not only did they not field her, they're actively trying to snuff her campaign out in the crib as anybody who's paying even the tiniest amount of attention to the way this works knows. So look, this is just, to me, this is just, forget evidence, this is proof. He has no idea what he's talking about in terms of, I mean, obviously the climate change stuff <laughs> made that point anyway, but like to know this little about the factions on which you're commenting is embarrassing. The Democratic Party is fielding Marianne Williamson. Are you, they would rather field Donald Trump than Marianne Williamson. There's no doubt about it. Again, embarrassing. So look, Jordan, I know you're with The Daily Wire now. I know you're buddy-buddy with Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. But, you know, you should try to be at least somewhat subtle about your movement to the right. Not this sprinting like Usain Bolt at 100 miles an hour to the right as far as you can go. Where, you know, anything involved with the left, anything involved with the Democrats, it's a conspiracy, it's nefarious, they're bad actors. It's just comical. And again, I find it hilarious from the people who like to argue. How many times have you heard them make this point? You should steel man your opponent, not straw man your opponent. Because engaging honestly is to steel man their position. There's nothing steel manny at all about this point. Your Democrat candidates in action. Everything is in apocalyptic crisis. Give us all the power now. Nothing suspicious about that. Well, Jordan, I hate to break it to you, but it's fair to call this an apocalyptic crisis. And the problem with the power is that big oil and the fossil fuel industry has it all, and they'd rather see the planet burn for profits than fix it. So again, is this a problem or not? The Middle East is becoming literally uninhabitable. Water shortages are brewing wars. The Colorado River is drying up. Heat waves driven by climate change have cost the world 16 trillion since the 90s. Anyway, there you have it. Marion Williamson doing a great job uh, crushing his climate science denial. Um, and Jordan, you might want to brush up a little bit on the internal factions within the Democrats before you pretend like, what, Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden are recruiting Marianne Williamson? Beyond laughable. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.